so much for this, sir. Now shall you see the other. You do remember all the circumstance. Remember it, my lord. So in my heart there was a kind of fighting that would not let me sleep. I thought I lay worse than the mutines and the bilbos. Rashly, and praise be rashness for it. Let us know our indiscretion sometimes serves us well when our deep plots do pall, and that she teaches there's a divinity that shapes our ends a rough view than how we would. Mm. That is most certain. Up from my cabin, my sea gown scoffed about me, in the dark, broke I to find out them, had my desire, fingered their packet, and in fine withdrew to mine own room again, making so bold, my fears for getting manners, to unfold their grand commission, where I found Horatio of royal knavery, an exact command, borrowed with many several sorts of reasons, importing Denmark's health and England's too, with oh, such bugs and goblins in my life, that on the supervised, no leisure baited, no, not to stay the grinding of the axe, my head should be struck off. It's possible. Here's the commission. Read it at more leisure. But wilt thou hear me how I did perceive? I beseech you. Being thus benetted round with villainies, ere I could make a prologue to my brains, they had begun to play. I sat me down, devised a new commission, wrote it fair. I once did hold it as our status to a baseness to write fair, and laboured much how to forget that burn. But now, sir, it did me yeoman service. Wilt thou know the effect of what I wrote? Aye, good my lord. <clears throat> An earnest conjuration from the king, as England was his faithful tributary, as love between them like the palm might flourish, as peace should still her wheaten garland wear, and stand a comma between their amities, and many such like as is a great charge, that on the view and knowing of these contents, without debate them further, more or less, should the bearers with the sudden death, not striving time allowed, how was a seal? Why, even in that was heaven over me. I had my father's signet in my purse, which was the model of that Danish seal. Folded the writ up in the form of the other, subscribed it, gave it the impression, placed it safely, the changeling never known. Now the next day was our sea fight, and what this was sequent thou knowest already. So, Guildenstern and Rosenkrantz go to it. Why, man, they did make love to this employment. They are not near my conscience. The defeat doth by their own insinuation grow. It is dangerous when the baser nature comes between the past and fell insensed points of mighty opposites. Why, what a king is this? Does it not? Think he stand me now upon? He that hath killed my king and whored my mother, popped in between the election and my hopes, thrown out his angle for my proper life, and with such cousinage. It's not perfect conscience to quit him with this arm, and it's not to be damned to let this canker of our nature come in further evil. It must be shortly known to him from England what is the issue of the business there. It will be short. The interim's mine. In a man's life no more than, say, one. But I am very sorry, good Horatio, that two laities I forgot myself. For by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. I'll court his favours. It shows the bravery of his grief to put me into a towering passion. <clears throat> Peace, who comes here? Your lordship is right welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. Does know this water fly? No, my good lord. Thy state is the more gracious, for to suffice to know him. He hath much land and fertile. Let a beast be lord of beast, and his crib shall stand at the king's mess. It is a trough, but, as I say, spacious in the possession of dirt. <clears throat> Sweet lord, if your lordship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. I will receive it, sir, with all diligence and spirit. Put your bonnet to his right use. Tis for the head. I thank your lordship. It is very hot. No, believe me, it is very cold. The wind is northerly. It is uh, indifferent cold, my lord, indeed. But methinks it is very sultry and hot for my complexion. Uh, exceedingly, my lord, it, it is very sultry as to a... I cannot tell how. My lord, his majesty bade me signify to you that he hath laid a great wager on your head. Sir, this is the matter. I beseech you, remember. Uh, nay, good my lord, for my ease in good faith. Sir, here is newly come to court Laertes. Believe me, an absolute gentleman. Uh, full of most excellent so uh, excellent differences, a very soft society, uh, and, and a great showing. Indeed, you speak feelingly of them. He is the card or calendar of gentry, for you shall find in him the continent of what part a gentleman would see. <coughs> Sir, his definement suffers no perdition in you, though I know to divide him inventorially with dozy the arithmetic of memory, and yet with your neither in respect of his quick sale. But in the verity of extolment, I take him to be a soul of great article, and his infusion of such dearth and rareness as to make true diction of him, his semblable is his mirror, and who else would trace him? His umbrage, nothing more. Your lordship speaks most infallibly of him. 
The concern is he, sir, why do we wrap the gentleman in our more raw breath? Sir? It's not possible to understand another tongue you will to it, sir, really. What imports the nomination of this gentleman? Uh, of Laertes. This person sent me already old golden words are spent. Of him, sir. I know you are not ignorant. I wish you did, sir. But if you have faith you did, it would not much approve me. Well, sir, you are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is. I dare not confess that, lest I should compare with him in excellence. But to know a man well worth to know himself. <clears throat> I mean, sir, for his weapon. Uh, but in the imputation laid on him by them in his need, he's unfellowed. Hmm. What's his weapon? Rapier and dagger. That's two of his weapons. Well, the king, sir, hath wagered with him six Barbary horses, against the which he hath pawned, as I take it, six French rapiers and poignards, with their assigns as girdle, hangers, and so. Ah, uh, three of the carriage, in faith, are very dear to fancy, very responsive to the hilts, so most delicate carriage, and a very liberal conceit. And what call you the carriage? Uh, I know you must be edified by the Martin day you had done. Uh, the carriage, sir, are the hangers. Ah, the phrase be more germane to the matter if we could uh, carry a cannon by our sides, or it might be hangers till then, but put on. Six Barbary horses against uh, six French swords, their assigns, and three liberal conceited carriage. That's the French bet against the Danish. Uh, why is this all impawned, as you call it? The king, sir, hath laid, sir. Then in a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed you three hits. He hath laid on twelve for nine, and it would come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. Hmm. How if I answer no? I mean, my lord, the opposition of, uh, the opposition of your person in trial. Sir, I will walk here in the hall. If it pleases majesty, it is the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing, and the king hold his purpose, I will win for him and I can. If not, I will gain nothing but my shame and the odd hits. <laughs> Shall I deliver you even so? Uh, to this effect, sir, after what flourish your nature will. I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours, yours. It does well that the man in himself throw no tongues else for his turn. This lap ring runs away with a shell on his head. <laughs> he did comply, sir, with his mother's dug before he sucked it. Thus has he and many more of the drossy age. Thus has, me, thus has he, and many more of the same breed that I know the drossy age dotes on, only got the tune of the time, and out of an habit of encounter, a kind of yeasty collection, which carries them through and through the most fanned and winnowed opinions, and do but blow them to their trial, the bubbles are out. <clears throat> My lord, his majesty commended him to you by young Osric, who brings back to him that you attend him in the hall. He sends to know if your purse shall hold to play with Laertes, or that you will take longer time. <laughs> I am constant to my purposes. They follow the king's pleasure. If his fitness speaks, mine is, mine is ready now, or whensoever, provided I be so able as now. The, the king and queen are all coming down, in happy time. The queen desires you to use some gentle entertainment to Laertes before you fall to play. She well instructs me. <laughs> you will lose, my lord. I do not think so. Since he went into France, I've been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. But thou wouldst not think how ill all's here about me. But it is no matter. Nay, the good, my lord, it is but foolery. But it is such a kind of game giving as would perhaps trouble a woman. If your mind dislike anything, obey it. I will forestall the repair hither and say you are not fit, not a wit. We defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of a spell. Uh, 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 there's a just <sighs> Not a wit. Not a wit. We defy Augury. There is special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is there. Yeah. Since no man about knows, since no man knows what of what he leaves, let us believe the times. Okay. <clears throat> Not a whit. We defy our beauty. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be, fuck my dog. 
not a whit, we defy our belief. There is a special providence in the fall of the sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man knows aught of what he leaves, what is the Come, Hamlet, come, and take this hand from me. Give me your pardon, sir. I have done you wrong. But pardon it, as you are a gentleman. This presence knows, and you must needs have heard, how I am punished with a sore distraction. What I have done that might your nature, honor, and exception roughly awake, I here proclaim this madness. Was Hamlet wrong, Laertes? Never Hamlet. If Hamlet from himself be taken away, and when he's not himself, does wrong, Laertes, then Hamlet does it not. Hamlet denies it. Who does it then? His madness. If it be so, Hamlet is of the faction that is wronged. His madness is poor Hamlet's enemy. Sir, in this audience, let my disclaiming from a purpose evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot my heir or the house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied in nature, whose motive in this case should stir me most in my revenge. But, in my terms of honor, I stand aloof, and will no reconcilement till by some elder masters of known honor I have a voice and precedent of peace to keep my name unbored. But, till that time, I do receive your offered love like love, and will not wrong it. I embrace it freely, and will this brother's wager frankly play. Give us the foils, come on. Come, one for me. I'll be your foil, Laertes. In mine ignorance, your skill shall, like a star in the darkest night, stick fiery off the lead. You mock me, sir. No, by this hand. <laughs> Give him the foils, young Walter. Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager? Very well, my lord. Your grace hath laid the odds of the weak aside. I do not fear it. I have seen you both. But since he is better, we have therefore odds. This is too heavy. Let me see another. This likes me well. This likes me well. These fours are all alike. I, my good lord. <clears throat> Set me the stoops of wine upon that table. If Hamlet be the first or second hit, or quit an answer to the third exchange, let all the battlements the old ones fire, the king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath. And in the cup, an union shall he throw, richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Give me the cups. And let the kettle to the trumpet speak, the trumpet to the cannon air without, the cannons to the heavens, the heaven to earth. Now the king drinks to Hamlet. Come, begin. And you, the judges, bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. One. No. Judgment. A hit. A very palpable hit. Well, again. Stay. Give me drink. <clears throat> Hamlet, this pearl is thine. Here's to thy health. Give him the cup. I'll play this bout first. Set it by a while. Come. Another hit. What say you? A touch. A touch. I do confess. Our son shall win. He's fat and scant of breath. Here, Hamlet. Take my napkin. Rub thy brows. The queen carouses to thy fortune, Hamlet. Good, madam. A good drink. Do not drink. I will, my lord. I pray you pardon me. It's the poison cup. It's too late. I dare not drink yet, madam. By and by. Come, let me wipe thy face. My lord, I'll hit him now. I do not think it. And yet it's almost against my conscience. Come for the third day, it is. You do but dally. I pray you pass with your best violence. And I fear you make a wanton of me. Say you so. Come on. Nothing either way. Got you now. Part them, they are incensed. Nay, come again. Look to the queen there, ho. They bleed on both sides. 
How is it, my lord? How is it, Andes? Why, as a woodcock to my own spring, also. I am justly killed with mine own treachery. How does the queen? She swoons to see them bleed. No, no. The drink. The drink. Oh, my dear Hamlet. The drink. Villainy! How? Oh, let the door be locked! Treachery! Seek it out! Get it here, Hamlet! Hamlet! Thou art slain! No medicine in the world can do thee good. In thee there is not half an hour life. Half an hour's life. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbaited and unvenomed. The foul practice hath turned itself on me. Lo, here I lie. Never to rise again. My mother's poison. I can no more. The king. The king's to blame. The point in venom too. Venom. To thy work. <coughs> treason, treason. Oh, yet defend me, friends. <coughs> I am but hurt. <coughs> yeah. Thou incestuous, murderous, damned Dane. Drink off this potion! Is thy union here? Follow my mother! He is justly served. It is a poison tempered by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. I am dead, Horatio. Wretched huh. queen, adieu. Uh, you that look pale and tremble at this chance that are but mutes or audience to this act had I but time. As this fell sergeant death is strict in his arrest, oh, I could tell you. Let it be. Horatio, I am dead. Thou livest. Report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. Here's yet some liquor left. As thou art a man, give me the cup. Let go. I have an old habit. King, 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 king. Oh God, Horatio. What a wounded name, thing standing thus unknown, shall I leave behind me? If thou didst ever in thy heart, but if thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, I'd sent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. What warlike noise is this? Young Fortinbras, with conquest come from Poland to the ambassadors of England, gives this warlike volley. Oh, I die, Horatio. The potent poison quite o'ercrows my spirit. I cannot live to hear the news from England, but I do prophesy the election lights on Fortinbras. He has my dying voice. So tell him, with the occurrence more and less which have solicited the rest. Yes.